Okay everyone, today's 360 training video is how to operate a telehandler. So first thing, three points of contact, getting in. Okay, then seat belt. Okay, so after you're secured in there, uh, first thing, turn the key, make sure everything's operational. Once I'm good, turn this key over. Do you know I've got a service notice on this? That's my one indicator there. Now today, uh, we're gonna do this, if you don't know 360 videos again, this camera, uh, pan everywhere you want to kind of see what I'm looking at. We kind of make this as much first person view as possible. Uh, we are uh, running a CAT TL943D telehandler today. I'm going to go over the controls on this one. What I've found with telehandlers, they are, it's kind of unique by brand. They are a lot of different control options. They're not as much like excavators or wheel loaders that are fairly well consistent. I find there's a lot of different joysticks or configurations, I should say, based on the manufacturer. So uh, with that said, safety is always first. Seat belts on. And I see on this one, I got a parking brake on. For cat, parking brake's right there. Um, some will actually have a hand lever, hand brake there. That's another option on some machines you'll see. Now with this, uh, I'm gonna start with just my right joystick. Uh, joystick is your boom control. So if I pull back on this, it's gonna raise the boom up. And if I bring push forward, it'll bring the boom back down. And then uh, the left and right controls the extension, the uh, telescopic portion of a boom lift, uh, telescopic telehandler like this. So if I go out, if I go away from my leg, it goes away from me. That's one way to kind of remember it. Also, there's a lot of times you have to give it throttle. If I'm in park here, it makes it go a little bit faster. Out. And if I pull back, if I go to the left, bring it into my leg, the telescoping feature is going to come back to me. While this is partly out, one of the other pieces you want to know on a telehandler, there's a lot of different, uh, because you're lifting from a distance, center of gravity becomes a real issue on a telehandler. So there's a couple indicators you want to know. First, you saw my telescoping boom there. I've got A, B, C. It goes all the way up to H, I believe, on this machine. Uh, but that's going to be kind of your markers, your graduation marks on how far out. That's going to correlate on the charts I have right here. So you need to see that one. The other is if you see on the boom lift there, on the actual boom itself, it's got my angle. Right now it's hanging at about zero degrees because we're relatively flat. That's another one you got to make sure it works. And then the final is up on top of my head here is this is my machine, whether I'm level or not. So I can pitch this thing 10 degrees one way or the other. So you want to make sure you have all those three components. I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way back into me. And then for the thumb controls, this is where some of the other machines, depending on the brand, gets a little bit different. But for this one, if I push up on this right, on that thumb control, it pitches my forks down. If I pull back, it pitches them up. I'm gonna bring it back to straight. And then my right one there is my uh, pivot. It'll actually swing the forks left or right like that. It goes one way or the other. Again, not all machines will have that feature. There's different, some will actually swing the entire fork system. So it just depends on there. Uh, so those that, that's that uh, control there. Those are all the thumb controls, or I'm sorry, the joystick controls here. Uh, there are a lot of mach larger machines will actually have um, some big outriggers on front that usually those are operated there's a switch underneath here that if you hold that and push forward it bring them both down um, if you push but do one side just bring the other that's how it works on a cat you'll notice on other machines i've seen where there's other levers things like that uh, on the uh, right side here to control those so now that's all my joystick controls while i'm over here right to my lower side on the right, there's a switch system right there. That's what controls the cab tilt. And that's where, if you're looking up there at that zero degree, you'll see I can pitch this machine 10 degrees one way and go 10 degrees the other. So this is important before you get a load, you're always making sure 
that you're on that zero degrees. Anytime you're not, that means you're going to be off center and it's a much more, it's a much higher risk of uh, tipping this thing. So right there, I'm at zero. That's all my right hand. Now left for steering, um, you'll see right here, basically there's three different steering modes on this. There is a, for the cap machines, there's a switch down here, plus I can see on the indicator. I'm on four wheel steer right now. I'm gonna start out in the center. And the center on this is two wheel steer. That means just the front tires are going to turn. The, my rears will not turn. If I go click that down, it's four wheels, four wheel steer, which is much tighter. It'll actually, my out front ones will turn as well as my back one, so I can do a really tight turn. Usually you will only wanna do that in a really tight area. You do not wanna do that when you're driving fast or not, because it can get a little bit squirrely when you're trying to drive at a high speed at that. And then you've got your crab steering, I call it crabbing, uh, where you basically, they'll take them both this way. So and I'll show you those in a second, but it'll basically take both, so it'll go uh, horizontally together like that. That's good if you're trying to get in really close to a building or something like that. So I'm gonna put it back on the center. And then two feet, usually use two feet in a telehandler. Uh, just so you can hold this and give it some throttle. Right now I got parking brake on. I'm gonna take that off. And then you've got your shifter here. On this I've got four speeds. See, so you can spin through them and it'll say on my display. I usually end up in two. And then just pull up, forward, reverse. I'm gonna go up here. Now, as I'm driving up, we've got a junk car here. This is what I'm gonna use as an example. First thing, it's you wanna level those forks. So either you do that at eye level like that, and I can actually see, I mean, this is the best direction that I can see if they're level or not, or just do it right on the ground before you go in, because I can see on the ground, if I'm hovering just an inch or two above the ground, you can control that that way. Uh, it's important to do that because you're not gonna be, if you're up in the air, you can't see that, you don't know what level is, you always wanna start level. Now I'm gonna go into this car, you always, I'm going to tilt the front of those tips down just a little bit to get started so I can get all the way underneath. Now you always want to pick up as close to yourself as possible. You don't ever want to reach out. It's all about center of gravity here. So I'm just underneath. I'm all the way. I'm going to pull up just a little bit. And now I'm going to curl my forks to pull that car towards me a little bit. And I always want to have it angled in so it's towards the front of this thing. It's on the plate up front there. Now, I'm in neutral right now. Now, this car I know is 3,000 pounds, but that's where you start looking at this. I can see the 3,000 pound mark here. This gives me the different degree angles. Like, for this weight, I can actually go, I could go all the way up. And you can see now, if you see that indicator mark, you can see how that degree marker is moving. So if you look up, you can see I'll be at about 30 right there. You can see that mark. So this gives you the indicators on what you're safe being at. Now, generally you wanna raise up to the height you need to be first, and then you're gonna extend. You don't ever wanna extend out first, just because that's where the machine can get tippy. Uh, so you wanna try and be down low, and then if I wanted to extend, I'm gonna be really cautious here, because this is where, again, I'm at that level where I won't be able to go out very far. Bring it back down. Looks like my bottom fork went through the bottom of that junk car. That would have been fun if it fell off. <laughs> Curling the forks back in while I'm coming down. But the other thing, if you want to experience, sometimes I, for a new operator, I say, get that tippy feeling while you're down low on the ground. So I know right now, it's about D is about, if you can see the 3000 mark, I'm gonna be at zero degrees-ish. I'm right in there. So I'm gonna be right, if I follow that mark around, around E. Now if I just give it some throttle here and get this out, I'll raise it up a little bit. This is where knowing too, you gotta be at zero degrees, otherwise it won't go straight out. But right about here is the limit it says. Now you'll notice if I keep going, and this is why I tell new operators, do it while you're low to the ground and you can experience this. But I can feel it right now. I can feel if I pull back kind of hard on this, my back end, drop it a little bit. And I can see my back tires actually came up off the ground. If I keep going, this whole machine will just kind of tip. But So that's good. You see I'm at G, and usually I tell people, if you don't know, go all the way out. By the time you see, it's usually going to be about, they always have a margin of error. So it's probably going to be two letters or two graduation marks further 
but you never want to go out to that limit unless you're right above the ground. So now I'm going to bring it back in. Now driving position, you want to be right there, uh, down low, low and tight. I usually like for these machines with the boom up higher to be able to see all the way underneath there. If you bring it all the way down to the ground, like here, I just lost all my visibility for right there. So you just want to be up just a hair. I don't want to be too high. And now I can see all the way through. And then for steering right now, I'm on front wheel steering. So if I turn again, it's going to be kind of wide turns. If I need to do a tight turn, if I push down on that, always do it when the line wheels are lined up straight. Now I basically, you can see how tight this thing will turn now. What you want to, again, this will tear up your gravel, your ground if you're not on, depending on what you're on. So you want to be cautious on that. But usually if I'm in a tighter yard, that's where you want to go to that three, the, the 360 steering, bring it to a stop. And then if I do the crabbing, this is where it'll go horizontally. See how I'm just sliding sideways like that. And go the other way. And then straighten it back out. A lot of times to know if your rear axle is straight, if you can see, I can actually look down my mirror and I can see if that wheel is in line with the frame, with the side door. Now I'm gonna put it back on four wheel steer. And then reverse is just clicking it back like that. Looking behind you. There are mirrors on both sides. That's that. And then let's set this down. And then slide it out. Once you're clear, raise it up just a little bit. There you go. And then to park the machine, you always want to have this bug, uh, the forks flat on the ground, so they're not a tripping hazard or anything. Perfect. Neutral, parking brake on. Make sure you have a park. That's the other thing. I see a lot of operators jump out of the machine when it's still in neutral because there's not any block in the door. And after that, I can go ahead and shut this machine off. Climb on out. Okay, everyone, that's how to operate a telehandler. Hope you enjoyed this 360 video. Leave a comment below, and we'll see you on the next video.